Hello and welcome. My name is Jada. I am the owner and designer of Mrs. Moon and Heaven. I am a full-time crochet artist and today we're going to do a tutorial on the pillow cozy, which is a perfect cozy for any type of coffee really, but mostly iced coffee because I'm an iced coffee gal year round. Literally anytime I go out and get coffee, I always bring my cozy and I use it every time. I always get so many compliments on it because it truly is so smart. Saves your hands from the condensation, saves it from getting cold, even insulates it a little bit. I did a little test where I left two in the car for a second and the one with the cozy had more ice in it. Up on the screen, there are a few different versions. I'm only going to be covering one, which is the basic cozy with a handle. The handle really does help in like making it easier to carry. It also just looks very cute. If you do want to see the full version of the video, I do have it up on our Patreon, which will be linked in bio if you're interested. This will be available for our little moon members and up, which is a $5 tier, $10 tier. Or if you just want to support, we also do have a $1 and $3 tier with other perks, including a Discord server for everybody. Otherwise, we also do have a written pattern, which is available on our website with all of the versions as well including this one if you just want to read it and follow along. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm using Hobby Bungee Mini, which is the perfect yarn for this. It's a tube yarn. It's a polyester cotton blend. So it's a tube yarn filled with cotton, which helps absorb all that condensation that comes off of iced coffee cups. Also, it's nice and thick. There are some dupes for this, but you might have to double up or do something a little bit different. This is just super thick and nice. You're also going to need a 12 millimeter hook. The yarn calls for a 10 or 12. I'm using a 12. You maybe could change this up but I do recommend using a 12. You're gonna need a darning needle thick enough to hold this yarn, a nice jumble one, and also some scissors. Everything will be linked below for your convenience that I am using, and let's get started. So I'm gonna show you the one with the handle, but you can also make this without the handle, like these over here. It's a minor adjustment. You just have to do a seamless finish at the end. Personally, I prefer the handle makes it different, makes it cuter, and makes it easier for you to hold in my opinion. There's also gonna be some size differences. Both of them will actually fit most coffee cups, but I would suggest that you make the size that is congruent to the size that you get more often. For example, I am a 32 ounce big fat coffee girly, so I'm gonna make the bigger of the two. It will still fit actually a 16 ounce like perfectly, but if you're only getting like a 16 ounce, then make the smaller of the two because it will just be a little more comfortable. But if you're getting a big coffee a lot, a 24 or 30, Two most often then I recommend doing the bigger of the two sizes but truly they are so quick to make that you can also just make both so anyway let's start off with a slip knot a simple slip knot and just put that on your hook nice and tight we're gonna start off with a chain 13 additionally you may also get a coffee cup that you use often go out get yourself a coffee and then use this to measure your cup that'll help if you let's say don't get this yarn or you have a different tension than I do if you are doing that, then make a chain long enough that it will fit around your coffee cup with a bit of stretch. Once you get that chain, you are going to go into the very first chain that you made like so, and you are going to slip stitch, thus making it a circle. And be sure not to twist your chain. It's a little easier because this is a smaller chain so you could see that it's not twisted, but sometimes you twist and you don't notice until you do the second round and it really sucks. Now this is an older video, I will not lie. Now I go into the back bumps of the chain. So when I slip stitch, I make sure that the back bumps are facing upwards. It just gives it a cleaner finish. I didn't do it for this one. This is still literally the coffee cozy I use to this day. So it doesn't make that much of a difference besides looking at it aesthetically. So that's up to you. If you do want to go into the back bumps, after you make your chain, take that last chain off of your hook and flip it over. So that way when you slip stitch into the very first one, the front side of the chain faces each other and thus makes it not twisted when you do end up going into the back bumps. So slip stitch to connect by inserting into the first chain and slip stitching through both the first chain and the last chain and chain one, just as you would if you didn't do the back bumps. And you're gonna go into this first back bump and it's going to feel a little bit hidden if so, just pull up the back bump and insert your hook into that section. And the rest of my bumps are also a little bit tight, as you can see. So what I do for this is I just literally pinch open that back bump so that it's easier to insert my hook. And you're just going to have to ricochet around just as you would if you were just going into the chain, but you're going into the back bumps instead. Like I said, this just makes a more aesthetically pleasing finish if you look at the foundation row. 
the chain on the bottom appears more so that it looks kind of prettier. It's absolutely not necessary. It's just an aesthetic choice. Anyway, chain one, and you're gonna go into the very first stitch, like so, with a half double crochet. It's gonna be a little bit tight. And you are just gonna continue to go around each chain and place one half double crochet. As you can see, I'm, I'm struggling a little bit. I made that chain a little bit too tight, but that's all right. That's actually quite good for the purpose of the cozy because it stays nice and snug at the bottom, if you feel me. Something else I would change now watching this back is I would half double crochet over that tail end just so it's one less way to weave in later on, but it's not that big of a deal. Continue to half double crochet around the entirety of your chain 13 from the beginning or however many you chained. At the very end, you should have the same number of stitches that you started off the chain with because that slip stitch actually made like another fake stitch or chain, if that makes sense. So I have 13 stitches right here. And so I'm going to slip stitch at the very top of the first half double crochet. I'll tell you a little secret though. Sometimes I do add an extra stitch into that fake slip stitch at the very end because what it does, it creates a tighter bottom for your coffee cup so it like doesn't slip around and it actually stays like nice and snug. You can see that I'm like second guessing myself and counting over here, but I do that for my more recent ones. That's up to you if you wanna do that. Again, this is the same cozy. I still use a year later, many coffee uses and it's perfect, but you know, preference if you want. So after you do that slip stitch, you're gonna chain one and turn and this is going to create a straight seam for you. And then you're gonna half double crochet in the first stitch and every stitch around. So you should have 13 stitches once again. Now the thing with working in a round and chain one and turning in between each round is that usually if you didn't turn, you would skip the slip stitch at the very end of the round in order to not accidentally increase. But because we are turning after each round, we are going to actually crochet into that very first slip stitch. And so to make up for that, in the end, we're going to skip over that very, very, very last stitch. And therefore you won't increase. This is easier with something like this because there's only 13 stitches. So you can count and make sure that you're not accidentally increasing, but that's just a great rule of thumb for if you want to have a straight seam, turn in between each round and also not accidentally increase and botch your project, you know? So skip over that last stitch and slip stitch into the very first half double crochet from the beginning of the round, chain one and turn once again and repeat that round. So back into the first stitch and you're gonna have to crochet around once again. And you're gonna skip that last stitch and slip stitch into the top of the very first half double crochet from the round. So you should have 13 stitches in each row so far or the same amount of stitches that you started off with. So we're getting to the end of this round. You'll see me do the half double crochet at the end and here's the top of the half double crochet from the beginning of the round and I'm gonna slip stitch right there. If you were doing the smaller of the two versions, this is where you are going to finish your half double crochet rounds. If you're gonna do the bigger of the two versions, you are going to do one more round of half double crochet. So just repeat that, chain one, turn, and do your half double crochets in each stitch. But right here, I'm doing the small version. So that's gonna be the end of the half double crochet round. So it's a total of three half double crochet rounds. I'm gonna chain one and turn. And instead of doing a half double crochet, you're going to do one single crochet in each stitch in this round. So making sure to go into that first stitch, single crochet, 13, skipping that very last stitch and slip stitching to the top of the first single crochet from the round. This is gonna create a nice border at the end of your cozy. If you are not doing the handle, you are not gonna slip stitch into the top of the first single crochet from the round. I'm gonna show you what to do right now to make a nice seamless finish. If you wanna do a handle, I don't blame you. Skip to this timestamp, it's so cute. But if you do not wanna do a handle, you're gonna stop at the very last single crochet and cut a nice long tail. I did about, eh, what is this, like 10 inches? And instead of fastening off, you're just gonna pull it just like this. So you're gonna finish that last single crochet and just pull the end through. You're going to get your darning needle and we are going to do a seamless finish. So when you fasten off at the end of a round, you tend to see that knot, and this is just gonna prevent that. So we're gonna thread our needle, and we are going to go into that first single crochet of the round and go underneath that stitch, like so. So I'm going outer to inner, and I'm gonna pull that all the way through until that stitch is equal to the gauge of the rest of your stitches, because we're gonna make this blended and look like another stitch. Then we're gonna go into the top of 
the last single crochet from the round and through that bottom bump right there and pull the yarn through. So in between that V, thus making it look like another stitch. So it should look like this. It should look like a seamless finish to your round, which is what this is. And if you need to pull or loosen it a little bit so it blends in with the other stitches. And I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna put the tail end into the inside of the cozy. So that way I could tie a knot and finish it later. Before I flip it inside out, however, I'm going to take the tail end from the beginning of the project and I'm also gonna thread that to the inside of the project so that way I can weave it end as well. I looped it into the very last chain from the foundation row because I didn't like how it made like a weird gap and plus this hid the knot a little more. So this is what it looks like right now and we're just going to flip it inside out because now we're going to weave in the ends to make it nice and secure. So we're going to start off with that last tail, the one that we used to make the seamless finish. And you can tie a knot here if you want to make sure it's extra secure. Sometimes I do like doing that just to make sure that that last seamless finish doesn't get too big and look a lot different than the other stitches, but it's not necessary, you really don't have to. So you just wanna weave in your tail end three different directions. The reasoning behind this is because your project is not gonna stretch three different ways, thus your tail end is going to stay in there, which keeps it secure. You just wanna make sure that you go in just a few stitches. It doesn't have to be too crazy. Because this is a tube yarn, sometimes the needle does pierce through the tube, and you could tell because you won't be able to pull the tail through. And if you're having a problem with this, just take it a few stitches at a time. Sometimes I even do one at a time if it keeps getting caught. And you're just gonna go back and forth constantly until you get at least three. I think I did like four on this one just to make sure it was really tight because I knew that I would be using this a lot. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna cut it right at the base of the tail and make sure that tail end is peeking through the back because if it's not peeking through the back, it might end up at the front and it just doesn't look as good. You're gonna do the same thing with the tail end at the bottom. You don't have to do a knot over here. There's already a knot from the slip knot from the very beginning. So you're just gonna weave it in three different directions as well. Again, you could take your time with this. You don't have to do a whole bunch of stitches at once. You could do one at a time in the same direction and then switch directions and so on and so forth. And when you're done, just give it a little pull, make sure that the tail end isn't peeking through the front or anything like that and making sure that it's nice and secure while also being hidden. And when you're done, flip that bad boy inside out and there's your pillow cozy. Now, if you wanted to do the handle, it's not that much different. You just wouldn't do the seamless finish to a round and let me show you how to get that done. So going back to the very last round, right here we're placing the last single crochet. Instead of cutting it off, what you would do is you would slip stitch into the top of the single crochet from the beginning of the round. Very similar to what we were doing at the end of each half double crochet round. So I'm gonna show you on a different version, but the same instructions still stand. You are going to chain nine at the end of this, and this is going to become your handle. If you're doing a custom one because you're using a different yarn or have a different gauge, it's going to be as long as your cozy basically, unless you're doing the small version. In that case, I would make it just a little bit longer to fit your hand. Basically, the handle just needs to be long enough to comfortably house your little hand when you're holding it like a mug. Then in the second chain from the hook, you are going to single crochet down until you get to the base of the chain. I'm once again doing the back bumps because I think that you can really see the finish on the handle. Again, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. You can just do a regular single crochet down the front of the chain. I like it. I think it looks cleaner. So yeah, continue to single crochet until you get to the end of that chain that you just made. When you single crochet down the entire chain, you are going to end up right at the top of the cozy and you're gonna slip stitch two. Make sure that your handle isn't twisted as well when you do this. Then you're gonna turn your work. You're not gonna chain one in between and you're gonna single crochet back down. When you get to the end of the row, you are gonna chain one and fasten off a nice long tail, long enough for sewing in and also weaving in the end. So I did about 24 inches. You also just wanna double check to make sure that your handle's the right size. If you're making a short one, once again, it's gonna be a little longer than your cozy. If you're making a regular size one, it's gonna be just as long. But also, if you would like, you can just double check that your hand fits nice and comfortably in that handle. It's long enough for your hand to fit cozily in there. 
Once you fasten off, pull the yarn all the way through, thus making a knot, and take your jumbo size needle and you're going to thread your yarn through. And what we're going to do now is we're going to sew the base of the handle onto the base of the mug cozy. So lie the handle flat down, making sure that it's going straight down, and you're just going to go back and forth from the handle to the mug cozy, making sure that you're going in every stitch and making sure that it's nice and secure. When you think you're done, just give it a little tug and see if there's any places that you think could use a little more sewing in. So right here I see that it's actually a little loose on the other corner from where I started. So I'm going to add one more stitch. This is just a good way to make sure to check that it is secure enough because remember you are going to be holding a liquid in here so you don't want to have it pop off or anything like that. Once you get to your final stitch and your handle is fully secure, you are going to flip your work inside out. And what I like to do before I start weaving in my end is I actually like to make a knot right here because it is holding the handle together. So I do that by taking my needle and going into a stitch nearby where the tail is coming out, making a loop and putting the yarn through that loop and tightening it so there's another knot and that just adds another layer of protection before I start weaving in the end. And after you secure this knot, you're just going to weave it back and forth just like we did in the other section without a handle. But in case you skip that section, all you have to do is weave your tail in in three different directions, thus making sure that it is truly secure in there because your cozy or any project for that matter is not going to stretch three different ways. So it's going to stay extra secure in there. And it might be a little difficult to bring this yarn through the stitches because it is so big. So if you need to just go one stitch at a time, you don't need to weave it through a whole bunch at once. I just make sure that it goes in the same direction, at least three or four stitches each direction. If you have another tail end from the foundation row, make sure that you also weave that in. In this version, I actually did end up crocheting over that tail end for the next three rounds, thus making it go three different directions so I didn't have to weave it in I just had to snip it right off at the end and that eliminates an entire step so if you end up crocheting over that tail end you don't have to weave in anything else but the very last tail after you weave in your last end or ends just snip it right at the base it's okay if it sticks out a little bit in the back because then it just won't go out through the front it's so thick that it's hard to hide the tail end in the stitches like with most other yarns. So just make sure it sticks out on the back and not the front. Give it a little stretch so that it goes inside the stitches and make sure that it doesn't come out the front and you're done. This is your beautiful new mug cozy and I hope that it keeps your hands nice and warm or dry while you enjoy your iced coffee year round. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like. Subscribe if you would like to see more. Leave a comment if you want to comment something. And make sure to check out our other socials. If you want the written pattern for this one and a few other versions, be sure to also check that out in the description below. If you want to shop the yarn, that link will also be in the description below. It is an affiliate link. However, I love this yarn and this is actually a yarn that I bought myself before I got any type of affiliate links and I think that it's perfect for this project because of everything that I've said previously in this video. If you end up making this, be sure to tag me so I get to see your beautiful new cozies. Thanks for watching. Bye! Oh, I also have a Patreon. If you want to support us there, you can support us for as little as $1 a month. And we have a special Discord and you get special videos. And if you do the $10 tier, you even get a pattern of the month. But everybody that is a patron is listed right here. So you can also see your name here. And you also get 24 hours early access to YouTube videos. But guess what? You also get a full version of every single one of the pillows cozies that I posted almost a year ago at this point so wow so many perks uh, yeah make sure to check that out o okay that's all